before we look at the high frequency version of the super regenerative receiver that covers the aircraft band and maybe two meters, I did want to take an intermediate step. I had made this uh, bold statement that I wanted to pick up WWV at 25 megahertz. Well, WWV doesn't actually transmit at 25 megahertz, at least not anymore, but they do transmit at 20 megahertz. So in order to do that, I had to take the super regen uh, model that we built and add some turns. There's about 12 turns of uh, looks to be about uh, number 18 or number 20 wire. It's stiff enough, you know, it's a little bit wiggly, but this gets us down to the 20 to 30 megahertz region. And uh, I'm using one of those uh, 70 volt speaker transformers like you have up in the, uh, in the ceiling of uh, Macy's. And I'm just using the primary side of that as a, a choke for this to, to replace the 68K resistor on the original region. And uh, believe it or not, this works with the 6AU6, so a lot of guys were asking about that. Uh, I also procured some space charge tubes, so we're going to look into space charge tubes and trying to run this thing possibly at 12 volts. Wouldn't that be exciting if we could do a low voltage version? I know some of you get a little upset once we get above 100 volts or so, so let's, let's see what we can do with, with low voltage. And then we'll move on to the other video once we go through this material. Wow, that was easier than I thought. All I did was wind enough turn that I put the original 35 puff cap on there. And by God, the, uh, the regen just came right up. That seems too easy. We need to do something a little more difficult. What if we try a 6AU6 in there next to see if that will that will work? This is the 6AU6. It's definitely super generating. Picking up some CB with the 6AU6. So uh, the theory that the 6AU6 would work at lower frequencies holding up. This is a 6BA6. 6BA6 is doing a good job. Hello, hello, one, two, three, four, five. Audio test. Hello. So I actually did a little shootout between the Super Regen and my high quality. Uh, receiver and I found that uh, there's about a 20 dB better sensitivity on the uh, super deluxe receiver compared to the super regen. This is when I'm using a generator. So it is a simple receiver and it's not as sensitive as a proper receiver. 
a high quality super heterodyne will easily beat any super regen. However, in the frequency range that we're talking about between 20 megahertz and 30 megahertz, which this thing tunes quite easily with the uh, original 35 puff cap, it does appear to be noise limiting and I can prove that by simply attaching the antenna. So you could hear how the noise, the background noise came up simply by attaching the antenna. That tells me that the the band is actually noise limited. It's not limited by the sensitivity of the receiver. Okay. Still not hard enough. We need something even harder than that. I think I've got the answer. Here's a tube. This is an interesting tube. It's the 12AF6. This is a space charge tube. What if we could get this circuit to work on 12 volts? Maybe that's worth, worthy of uh, trying. This tube is uh, inexpensive and it's a uh, same pinout as the 6AU6 that's working so nicely here. So let's try to work this thing with uh, 12 or 13 volts. If we want to use a low voltage tube like the 12AF6, which is the intermediate frequency amplifier used in some of those 12 volt tube radios in the 50s, and there's many other equivalent tubes that would work just as well, uh, we have to make sure that we're preserving as much of that 12 or 13 volts and not wasting it in the collector resistor. So that means that we're probably going to have to reduce our regeneration control from the 50 or 100K that's suitable for, you know, the 80 to 100 volt range. And bring that down to probably a 1 or a 2K or even a 5K potentiometer. And we would like to completely eliminate the 68K uh, resistor that we're developing the audio across, the plate resistor. Uh, we cannot afford to waste voltage on that resistor. We need the voltage for the plate. So that means that we really need to use a piece of iron in order to not only reduce the DC losses, but in order to double the audio that we develop. And of course the ideal candidate would be a miniature choke like this. Uh, this miniature choke would be highly desired by uh, people building small regions or even the paraset group because it's a high Henry value in a very very small package. Pretty much unobtainium, unobtainium nowadays. Um, you might be able to find something like that in a box at a ham fest or in the bottom of some ham's uh, junk box. The next potential candidate for iron are those old chokes that were used in filters um, this is a high-value choke used in, I believe, the Apache as a audio clipper filter. Something like that would work good. Uh, the third candidate are microphone transformers. These typically uh, transformed uh, 50 to uh, 600 ohms up to a high value like 5,000 ohms or 10,000 ohms for carbon microphones. So th these are step-up transformers. And the secondaries are very, very nice for uh, uh, getting a lot of inductance in a small package. But more usually, we would use an audio output transformer like this. This is the typical 10K to 8 ohm type transformer. That 10K primary uh, will work fine. Uh, and if you can find a very small transformer, all the better, because usually the small ones have an even higher impedance. Do not use transistor transformers, as those are almost always low impedance. Also, uh, generally the 230 or 120 primary of small transformers for uh, power supplies usually don't have quite enough inductance to, to work as a, uh, a choke. So, uh, 
let me just measure one of these very quickly so you can kind of see what we're talking about for for impedance. I'll, I'll do the uh, the little choke first. If I can get the meter across it. 142 ohms. So that has a DC resistance of 142 ohms, but an AC impedance of many K ohms. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for to put in that plate circuit of the low voltage tube. So I've managed to find a nice 5K potentiometer. This is going to replace the 50K potentiometer that we have in there for the high voltage. And hopefully this will work with the 12 volt. So, starting to pick up some stations this afternoon. Uh, this is the regen that's been modified. The resistor has been replaced with the primary of this speaker transformer. It's one of those uh, 70 volt speaker transformers, just the primary. And we've got uh, 13 volts running the entire thing. 13 volts to light up the tube and 13 volts on the plate. And it goes right into regeneration very nice. We are running with 13 volts on the plate, 13 volts on the filament. It's a CB band. So it is working. It's not a lot of output. So let's uh, let's do something crazy. Okay, here's a 12 AU6. Let's plug that into the socket in place of the space charge tube that we had in there, and see if we can get an ordinary 12 AU6 to super regenerate with 13 volts. This ought to be interesting. I wouldn't expect much audio out of this compared to the space charge tube. And again, I'm using the primary of one of those ceiling transformers as my choke. Okay. Believe it or not, the 12AU6 is super regenerating and picking up stations on the CV band with uh, 13 volts on the plate. Not my uh, first choice of a circuit, but it is proving principal. The next thing I want to try is replacing the choke with a modest resistor, say 22K. Let's see if we can get things to work with a 22K resistor off our 5K pot. It's pretty silly, but we actually are hearing stations using an ordinary 33K resistor off the 5K pot. I've got it fully up, and this is with the 12AU6 tube. Let's try a 12BA6. That's a 12AF6. That's a space charge tube. One of these. 12BA6. Here we go. Let's see if we can get anything out of that. So the 12AF6 space charge tubes, all three of them that I got a hold of work.
That's doing something. It's not super regenerating down here. Um, tentative. Tentative on the 12 BA6. I think the AU6 worked better. Let's put the AF6 back in. Put the space charge tube back in there. There's one. Okay. Now the space charge, to charge tube with the 33K resistor. Does not like it. Does not like it. Well, I can tell you the space charge tube uh, really gets along good with the uh, choke. It's got the most output, but boy, it did not like that resistor. So the space charge tube really likes the, uh, the choke. A lot more output than either the 12AU6 with the choke or with the resistor. It actually starts super regenerating way down here. I'll bet that's a pretty low voltage. Let's see how low. Six point seven volts. Six point seven volts and that baby is super regenerating and receiving station. If you do use a space charge tube, I would use two stages. One to basically be the detector and the second to be your headphone amplifier. And you'd need a, a volume control even. But I'm not a real fan of this low voltage stuff. It's a little harder to control. But uh, for you guys that are afraid of high voltage, it is doing what it's doing. So this is just this is just to prove that uh, you know, 24 volts is a is a a good place to be as far as the uh, B plus on the receiver. We're picking up uh, WWV at 20 megahertz quite nicely, and uh, I'm simply putting in the 24 resistor. Volt. That's a massive resistor. You don't need one that big, but I'm just dropping 12 volts. You know, use a uh, a 12 volt tube and uh, it lights it up just fine. So this is just showing a 24 volt operation. This is uh, 12 BA6. So that's a 12 BA6 operating on 24 volts. Um, I'm using a dropping resistor to lower the uh, the filament voltage for the 12 volt tube for the 24 volts. But just showing that uh, 
that's a little better B plus for uh, a low voltage type uh, super regen. If you operate the detector as well as the uh, audio amplifier on 24 volts, you're going to get a lot of volume. You might even be able to drive a small speaker. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the super regen picking up some PSK31 on uh, 10 meters. How do I know? Well, I can go over to the big receiver. Turn this down. I know it's there. It's not real strong, but the Super Regen is able to pick it up. Okay, back to the Super Regen. And there it is. It's hard to believe, isn't it? So we get down to the CB band. No sign of WWV yet, even on the uh, on the big receiver. It's starting to come in. It's about 1600 hours East Coast time, four o'clock. So pretty weak still. We'll wait for this to build up before I attempt it with the uh, Super Regen working on 13 volts. My God, it is getting the 20 megahertz signal. Okay, even uh, even this week. Wow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, A-B comparison between the, the high quality uh, Watkins Johnson receiver and the little Super Regen. Pretty amazing how much you can get out of one tube. Okay, I know I might have offended your ears a little bit with that CB talk and uh, picking up CB with this uh, little receiver. That's just a, that's what entertainment's about. I have to bring some of that with these videos, so you have to you have to forgive me if I torture you a little bit. Um, I use words like walkie-talkie to do things like that as well. So uh, on the on this one, we did low voltage and we did low frequency with the super regen. I've been bugged about oh space charge, use low voltage and so on. So we got that out of the way. We know what happens when we run tubes at lower voltages. We know that we benefit if we use real chokes as opposed to resistors. We've learned a lot uh, during this little exercise. In the final Super Regen video, we're going to make a proper one, which calls for a proper box. So I got this nice box. It's oversized. I think we'll go full deluxe. We're going to build an aircraft band, maybe touch the 2 meter band uh, with this super regen. It's going to have two valves instead of one, two tubes. And uh, I think we'll even go for uh, deluxe dual tubes like maybe the 6BZ7, 6BQ7, or 12AT7 uh, uh, dual triode tube front end. Uh, with an isolating grounded grid amplifier on the front end, proper isolation from the antenna, because I know some of you are offended by uh, possibly re-radiation, so we want to eliminate that argument. Uh, then we'll go into uh, a stage of audio or two. I'm not sure where we're going to go with that. Uh, so we're going to have two valves mounted on this box. So stand by for Super Regen Part 4, where we make a real... Uh, official shielded super regen for the aircraft band.